What's up guys? It's finally time to install my Trail Forged HD steering. So this is the stock suspension on the Jeep WJ. The reason why I've been interested to kind of upgrade to the HD steering kit is primarily because while a lot of these tie rod ends are actually somewhat new, they're already starting to fail. And so with the Trail Forge system, it uses Heim joints, which is a lot stronger and should last significantly longer than these tie rod ends. So also, even though these are newer ends, I've noticed I'm already starting to have issues with play within this link. I'm gonna try my best to get it on camera, but if you can see, I can move it up and down. And this is with not completely tightened as much as I could without probably shearing this thing off. There's some upward down play here that I believe is causing an issue of if I hit a bump, uh, you'll kind of feel it in the steering wheel. So that's also why I'm trying to get rid of this system. So this is the stuff that you get from the Trail Forge kit. Um, not in pictured in this is actually, they send you some candies and some stickers and stuff to go with it. Way more upgraded, beefier parts. I mean, just the overall diameter of it and with a very nice powder coated finish. You get all the bolts included that's needed. Um, there is some drilling required. You just have to pretty much drill out the uh, what's on the knuckles, what's on the pitman arm, so that way you can actually accept the new grade eight bolts. The new size you're gonna be going up to is a 5 eighths. Um, so you can buy the reaming tool directly from Trail Forge. Trail Forge also makes it very easy because they go ahead and put together all your nuts and bolts and all the other things required. So it's it, they kind of make it pretty easy for you. Probably my first step is I'm gonna go ahead and lift the vehicle up and then attempt to take off all the nuts and bolts uh, on the knuckles uh, and also what's on the pitman arm. I'm probably gonna start with the most difficult one, uh, which I think it's probably just gonna be the pivot arm. I have a feeling it's gonna fight me to come off, but we're gonna see. The castle nut on this is actually hand loose, or actually pretty loose. I can loosen it by hand, so that's not good. All right, my hand already got the castle nut off. Okay, I'm actually surprised that worked. You can actually see that the tie rod end actually wasn't bad, but the boot was ripped. I don't know if you can hear the air coming out of it, but yeah, all the grease left quite a long time ago. All right, and this end link obviously had some issues because I should not be able to move this by hand at all. All right, so we went ahead and got the original one out. So the ball joint does have some play in it. So nothing too crazy though. So both sides have about the same amount of play, but obviously with these new ones, that's not ever gonna be the case because these are time joints. And so these should last significantly longer, especially when you're running 35s like I am. And just to kind of see just the sheer girth difference between the two, um, if you line these two up, I don't know if you can really catching on the camera, but I mean, there's a significant difference in diameter between these two tubes. So while also I have this on the bench, um, I'm gonna go ahead and line up the two links um, on both uh, from the original and the trail forged one. Just make sure they're about the same length, just so that way I'm not messing with my toe or anything like that. Uh, I'm still gonna need an alignment after this, but um, at least it's gonna be somewhat of a, a level that you're not gonna end up in a ditch trying to make it to the lineman shop. So you can kind of see the difference here uh, in length between the two ends. So I just need to undo this jam nut a little bit from here and lengthen this out just so it's approximately about the same uh, width as the original one. So it's gonna have to probably bring it out about an inch or so. All right, so they're approximately about the same length now. It's gonna be the same procedure also with the other two, uh, just trying to roughly get about the same length. So you can see on mine, I have to probably bring mine out about an inch as well, roughly. All 
All right, so now it's time to actually start drilling out the pinman arm and the knuckles. Uh, so uh, I'm like I said, I'm just gonna be using the reaming tool that I got from Trail Forged with the order. I'd recommend using some kind of cutting fluid. Uh, you can use WD-40. Uh, I have this just laying around. Um, it's specifically meant for like tap and die, kind of like cutting applications. So now we're gonna start reaming out all the holes to 5 8 Also, you should probably start with the pitman arm. Uh, the pitman arm, I believe, is made of cast iron, so it's probably going to give you the biggest bite when trying to cut through it. Uh, so just try to take your time. Don't rush it. Uh, and also make sure you wear safety protection because this kit is no good to you if you become blind from getting metal shavings in your eyes and you can't even drive the Jeep anymore. So don't be stupid. Please wear eye protection. So yeah, as you can see, uh, as long as you use just some good cutting fluid while you're cutting through your knuckle or through the pitman arm, um, honestly, it's not really that bad of a process. Um, even the reaming tool barely looks even that used. So yeah, just don't apply any pressure uh, on the back of the drill. Just kind of let the ream do its thing, just cut through slowly. And yeah, the only tough part might be the pitman arm just because I, I think it's cast iron, but I could be totally wrong. So. Don't hold me to that. Anyways, so now we're gonna be moving on to actually now finally putting in my new HD steering setup on the front end. All right, so I finally finished reaming out all the different spots uh, on the front end. So now we can actually go ahead and start installing HD steering kit. So things to note, the, the bend is gonna be facing towards passenger side. It's not gonna be driver side. And then uh, obviously, as long as you make sure to get the same length as your original setup. Shouldn't have too many problems with your toe uh, with the vehicle. This kit does allow you to do an over the knuckle setup or an under the knuckle setup. I'm personally gonna be doing a under the knuckle setup. There's a lot more benefits to an over the knuckle setup, but I didn't get the correct bracket I needed. And I also need a welder at the house to even get that set up. So it's probably something I'll do at a later point um, because once you've already done all the drilling and stuff, it's really easy to bring this over to an over the knuckle setup at that point. So I'm gonna be doing that. So next, um, I'm just gonna be kind of walking through of just kind of how you orientate the bolts and the different kind of spacers that are provided for the heim joint. So we're just gonna start from the pitman arm side. So first, you're just gonna go ahead and start with your bolt and then have a washer already applied to the bolt prior. Just for ease of install, I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolt on the top side then once you've done that you're gonna go ahead and take your washer apply the washer to the underside of the pitman arm and go ahead and use this and do a very similar process on the underside just go ahead and get this hand tight you're not gonna be able to torque this until you have your wheels back on the ground anyways Go ahead and put the bolt through, get the washer installed, put a washer on the underside. Alright, so similar thing. Go ahead and take the bolt with the washer already pre-applied, go through the knuckle. All right, cool. So yeah, that's just kind of the general orientation of all the washers and nuts from the whole assembly you're gonna get. So at this point, I'm just going to and tighten this down just so it's somewhat uh, fully settled in, but I won't actually apply the final torque to everything until the vehicle is back on the ground. Also, the heads on these uh, nuts and bolts, uh, for some reason, they're like a 15 16th. Uh, I had 
a socket laying around for it, but in case you don't have one, you may have to order one. So you have to pay attention to when you're installing the bottom one, um, because if you actually have it flipped upside down, uh, this part here will contact the bottom of this bolt. So just keep an eye out for that uh, so you don't have anything to rub against one another. All right, so I finally got everything just torqued down, uh, but not to its final spec. So now we can move on to just go ahead and installing the wheels back on the car. All right, so we're almost done. So I have the vehicle back on the ground. So now we just gotta torque everything down. So for the drag link side, we're just gonna go ahead and according to the instructions, it's gonna go to 100 foot pounds. And then uh, here on the knuckle side, that's gonna be 150 foot pounds. All right, we're finally done torquing down everything. So yeah, um, this is the finished install. And what you can expect to see, I did forget to order the bracket that you use in order to use your steering stabilizer. Um, I, I forgot to make it with my order. So don't make that mistake. Um, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna have to order that to reuse that. It's okay to drive it uh, without your steering stabilizer. You're just probably gonna have a little more vibration in the steering wheel than normal. But yeah, I mean, look at that. I mean, that's pretty impressive for a front end for what normally is just what is an over glorified minivan. If you see this play, inside these this is completely normal that's a normal amount of play you can expect to see from these heim joints same thing for this one so even as you drive and if you hear kind of like a bump uh that could be just your heim joint just kind of flexing but yeah this is kind of the giga chad of heavy duty steering as you can get uh for kind of like a stock setup yeah pretty happy with the overall install a couple of notes i just want to make before I end the video. One, if you are concerned about your toe being messed up, you can be taking a tape measure and measuring the distance from the outside of your tire compared to the other side and get a measurement and then do it on the rear side of the tire and do the same process and see if they are the same number. If you have the same number, that pretty much means you have, it's pretty much you don't have any toe in or out, you're pretty much dead straight, but you probably wanna have it just slightly toe in. So just, you know, you wanna have the front have a slightly smaller number than just the rear. Another thing to know is um, in some states, uh, actually using heim joints is actually illegal. So you may have to kind of look that up on a per state basis. In Ohio, I never really got an exact answer if it was or not. I guess it comes down to something to do with the fact that the steering system uh, that's not a dot approved steering link setup, so that's kind of why it could be considered illegal. So, uh, may want to look at the legality of that if you're kind of concerned. But yeah, so thank you for tuning in to this video. Um, I'm really happy I got this installed. Should have a lot better ride going forward. If you want to continue seeing further updates with a Grand Cherokee or my Corvette or my WRX and Soon, probably gonna be showing a couple of videos about my Miata. If you wanna follow along with those projects, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Um, you can kind of follow along with all the updates I got going with those. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future as well, go ahead and give the video a like. It really helps kind of promote my small channel to kind of have a fighting chance to show up in the algorithm. So again, thank you so much for watching.